Hello there, welcome to part 6 of our uh, drop in, drop out local multiplayer co-op game uh, tutorial series. In this part of the episode we are going to make our camera be a bit more interesting because currently it's just kind of sat there just staring down um, and while that works it would be quite interesting if it could follow the player around um, and if there's multiple players kind of follow them dynamically. So let's get to doing that then shall we? So with our camera in the scene here, I'm going to add a component called the camera controller and I'll make a script for that. Camera controller. Let's say camera controller. Open that, make sure I change this to reflect the name of the file. And what we're going to do here is we're going to say void start, start coroutine, camera start delay. <laughs> and we're get, again, we're going to do this just so uh, we know that it's definitely updating at the right time once the players are all in the game. Uh, it just gives us a bit of breathing room. Um, we'll just call this the camera start delay and we'll um, we'll come to that in a second uh, but the first thing we want to do is um, on the fixed update not the main update sorry uh, for now I'm just going to put yield return null in this just so uh, it can compile and uh, we'll come back to that in a minute Okay, so once we've got our camera start delay enum, uh, I enumerator here, sorry. Uh, what we want to do is we want to get a reference to our player, uh, player one, because we always know that there's going to be a player one because we've set up that way. So we can say um, up here, game object player one. And we can say here, player one. It's equal to game manager dot instance dot player list zero dot game object dot transform. And actually we don't want game object here, we want uh, a transform. And we can just say yield return new wait for seconds and just drop in just a small delay. So up here, uh, we need to change void update to void fixed update just so it moves on the physics step. Um, it helps move out some jerky motion. If it's still jerky after this, we can change it to either late update or maybe just put it back in update. We'll see how it works. Um, but usually fixed update is safe for camera movements. So what we're going to do, say if player one is not equal to null and Game manager dot instance dot player list dot count is less than two. So if there's only one player in the game and that and we have a reference to that player, then we want to do vector three desired position is equal to player one dot transform dot position plus uh, an offset which we're going to make up here. And then we want to smooth this out to make it quite nice and like buttery smooth. So we can say the smoothed position is equal to a vector three dot lerp. And that's going to go from the current transform position of the camera to the desired position. And it'll do that by the smooth speed times by time dot delta time. And the smooth speed is something that we can control here. And then we want to set our transform dot position equal to the smoothed position. So let's see if that works. 
So we'll let that compile. So we've got our main camera here. Um, we need to make the offset. We need to make the offset public as well, so we can change that. So let's hit play and see what happens. So nothing has happened. Why would that be? Let's have a look. Okay, so the problem was that we hadn't given it a smooth speed. Um, so what we want to do is make sure we assign a smooth speed um, just to avoid an issue like that. What we can do is default this to something. So say like 0 0.2f. And we'll just restart that. So we can see now that the camera it's following the player, it's smoothing, but it's right in the middle. So we just want to raise the camera up to say 15. And then we could move it back on the Z axis. So the player's just kind of central. So that's what minus five. So we can copy this offset, hit play paste in that. So now when we hit play, camera is going to move over here. And as the player moves, it will smooth along with it. Uh, what we can do, so obviously when it starts, then the cam once the player joins, then the camera moves over. Uh, what we might want to do is immediately set the transform as soon as we get the player set our transform position in the first instance to player one dot transform dot position so when we hit play the camera should just snap over there uh, it does but um, we need to add the offset And I'm just going to lower this to something a bit smaller, just so hopefully it's a bit more instant. So we hit play, and the camera is snapped over there. Then as we move along, uh, the camera will smooth over to our player. Let's just play with the smooth speed, just to get something that feels right. So that feels quite good. So I'll just, just call that 5.5 .5 and then just copy that, paste that in. <coughs> so now as the player is moving, the camera will follow the player. But as soon as we have another player to join, the, the camera is very much just following. Well, it would be following just the player, um, but because we've set it up so there, if they're is more than one player in the game, then it has to do something else. So we can set that up now. Uh, and what we are going to do there is we can just copy this and then say else if the game manager uh, instance dot playlist dot count is greater than two <coughs> is greater than or equal to two instead of saying player one dot transform dot position we can we're going to make a new function called find centroid which we can do down here. And that's going to be a vector three find centroid. Uh, 
And what this is going to do is it's going to return uh, the center position between all of the players. So we just need a couple of variables. So we can do vote variable total x and start that off as 0f. We need vote total y equals 0f bar total z equals 0f. So for each layer, in the game manager dot instance dot layer list we're gonna get our total x our and we're gonna add the player dot transform dot parent dot transform dot position dot x to the total x total y is exactly the same but it's the y and then the z z total z is this um so what we're doing here is we're getting every single player in the game and we're adding its x position to our total x and then we, we're going to divide that by how many players we're going to divide the total by how many players are in the game and that's going to give us the center x uh, so it's just finding kind of the average um x value between all of the players so now we can say bar center x equals the total x divided by the player or the game manager dot instance dot player list dot count. And I can copy that two times. This is the center y, center z, the total y, and the total z. And then finally, we're going to return a new vector of three, which has the center X, the center Y, and the center Z. So again, a bit confusing. Let's just go back through it. So every time we call the centroid, which is um, every frame on the fixed update, we're going to clear the totals of these total x y and z and then we're going to get every player that's in the game and add their x position to this total x value or the total y value and then we're going to make a new variable called center x and that is equal to the total divided by how many players are in the game and that's going to give us the average x position of all the players and the average y and the average c position of all the players and then we're going to return this center x y and z as a new vector um, and just so we can see this kind of uh in just so we can see this visualized i'm just going to do an on draw gizmos and i'm going to do gizmos dot draw cube and we can do this at the gizmos uh, at the gizmo pause which is a vector we'll make in a minute and i'm going to do in terms of a size, because it's a cube, it needs a, a, a y, x, and z dimension. So uh, we'll just do one, one, one. Up here, we're going to make a vector three, which is the gizmo pos. And at the end of this, we can set the position to the trans. We can set the camera's position, and then we can just tell the gizmo dot pos. Uh, what the centroid is. So this should theoretically just work. So player one is in the game. Camera is following the player. We can add in another player. You can see we've got this new, this box here, which is a gizmo. What's happening here is that as the player gets away, box is staying in the center of them and the camera is now following the box it's not following either the player if we add a third player to the mix uh, a centroid is now here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn off the coin spawning system because that's kind of getting in the way all right so let's try that again so we've got player one 
The sentry is just in the middle. It's not being used at the minute because there's only one player in the game. So just ignore it there. So once we add a second player, you can see that the gizmo has been updated to the center in between these two players. And the camera is focusing on this box. So that helps us keep both players on the screen. So as they're moving around, we're following the center point between them. So we, if I come over here and then add in another controller and bring that over here, you can see that we're still in the middle of all of the players. So that just makes it the camera uh, a lot more dynamic uh, and it's not biased towards just one player over another. And yeah, that's it for this episode about having the camera working with local co-op. Uh, and obviously this supports m multiple players. If we leave on a controller, it'll go back to the original one. It'll recalculate for that. If we join back in again, it's going to update. It knows where the players are. And it's following accordingly. And I've fallen off the map. <laughs> It's a dodgy controller. Okay, that's it for this episode. We've successfully got the camera moving to follow the center point of the players. As always, the project files for this uh, tutorial and all the other tutorials on my channel are over on Patreon, which is linked below. Uh, if you want to see the next part of this tutorial series, uh, you can either subscribe over on Patreon where they are all available right now, or um, if not, make sure you hit that subscribe button below, hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified when the next video goes live. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.